Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the fifth in the series of me documenting my ownership of my 1997 Porsche 911 Type 993S. In today's video we're going to discuss the reimagining of the suspension of my 911 to achieve the RS ride height aggressive stance. So we seem to have lost the normal UK summer weather that we've been having anyway for the last few weeks. We've now down into a bit colder climate, hence the jumper. And I think it's just started to rain a little bit, so it might be a little bit of rain on the car, which is very rare. So as part of the reimagining of my 993 to get it to the RS stance, that required the suspension to be overhauled. Any worn parts needed needing to be replaced and any upgrades made where necessary with the bushing. Now this is a 22 year old car, so a substantial amount of the suspension needed to be renewed anyway, because it was worn. It wasn't necessarily worn due to the mileage. It was worn just because it was 22 years old rubber perishes and gets old and when the car hasn't been driven very much as you know because this is a garage queen obviously parts still degrade over time so it's still they still need to be renewed so i'm just gonna first of all talk about the front suspension and then i'll talk about the rear suspension so with regards to renewing the worn parts for the front suspension the top mounts for the coilovers needed to be replaced they were worn the lower control arm bushes needed to be replaced now they were actually renewed with new bushes being pushed in and quite common, it's, it's, not, it's quite commonly people replace the bushes with, with new nylon bushes. Um, I didn't want to do that. So what we went with, leave it sure 75 rubber, which is actually the RS spec rubber that were pushed into the lower control arms. So that was quite a manual process. Now also, as part of the front suspension changes, because the car was lowered on a lowered stance, it was necessary to actually install RS wheel carriers. In America, they're called uprights. They're also called uprights or known as uprights here as well, but most people know it as a wheel carrier. So RS wheel carriers have been installed on here and that's to support the lower stance so you don't get bump what's called bump steer. In addition to the replacement parts I've already detailed, also the track rod ends were replaced which is standard practice when you put new, new wheel carriers on and there's all different types of track rod ends that you can install on this car. There's the standard version which has quite a bit of rubber in there which gives a cushioned effect on the steering so you've not got such a direct version of the steering or you can go to what, what's known as the RS track rod ends, the RS rod ends which have a small amount of rubber in there and which gives a little bit of cushioning more of a direct feel or you can go for the full-blown GT2 Evo version which is what I've actually installed and that gives you a very direct feel and there's no rubber in there at all so you've got direct pinion to pinion lock so there's no rubber cushioning the movements in the steering and it gives you a very direct steer steering balance it's very very good in that way very direct and you get a very sharp turn in especially with a low stance in addition to the maintenance renewal parts I've already detailed also the anti-roll 
all bar bushes were replaced. That's again standard practice with a car that's 22 years old. There's no point in trying to load a suspension to a certain height and setting the geometry up when you've got worn parts. You'll never get the geometry settings correct. First of all, you've got to bite the bullet, accept the costs, and just replace all worn parts in an old car like this. And of course, the main upgrade that brings the car down to this ride height and makes this capable is converting over to PSS10 coilover springs. With regards to the PSS10 suspension, the actual shocks are internal with the coils over the, over the outside. And the actual shock absorbers, with regards to standard practice or in normal vehicles, they're actually reverse round. That provides a more stable shock absorbing effect and I believe it's a better weight balance as well. Now PSS10 suspension, or PSS10 coilovers as they're known, are, as the name suggests, they have 10 settings. So that gives you a substantial amount of settings to be able to give, to be able to tune the car to the correct ride height uh, with regards to the stance you want the car to achieve, with regards to the road type, and with regards to the actual fitting the wheels within the actual arches of the car. Now coming to the rear axle, the lower control arms were replaced, so they're brand new. The coilovers and the shock absorbers were also, as with the front, upgraded to PSS10, thereby giving, again, the 10 stages of adjustment to provide the full suspension to be adjusted lower or higher to provide the desired ride height. And any other parts that were worn were replaced as required. Now I'm bound to have missed some sections, some bits and pieces that will have been replaced. There'll be all sorts of nuts and bolts. I'm now sure there'll be additional suspension parts that were replaced, but I just can't remember what they were. Um, obviously I never performed the work, my mechanic performed the work. So the key end result is that you end up with a ride height that is very aggressive and gives you this look and aggressive stance on a 993. Now subsequent to all the upgrades being performed and all the worn parts replaced, the next thing of course was to actually set the ride height up of the car. Following renewing the worn parts of the suspension and the upgrades to bring it to RS specification for the ride height, it's then necessary to do a full wheel alignment. Now in the rear of the 993 you have a multi-link suspension. This was provided as an upgrade to the 993 from the previous version of, that was installed to the 964 model. In effect, the 993 gained what became the 996 rear multi-link suspension. Now with a rear multi-link suspension in, this, in the design of the 993, there's many, many adjustments to set it up correctly. And that requires substantial amount of effort in alignment. To achieve the RS height, it's necessary to measure from certain points on the underbody of the car to denote RS specification. Now that was achieved by those points being measured and then 10 millimeters being added to that height to be able to give you the clearance that we have, as you can see, on the rear arches and on the front arches. That clearance was necessary for UK roads. If we had it down to what the Americans can get away with, which, which would be actually around RS height, that just isn't usable in the UK. The car would be crashing and banging all the time and it'd be just awful to drive. So it's necessary, unfortunately, to add a little bit more height in the UK so that you enable the car to ride a little more comfortably on the UK roads. As part of the reimagining of the car, I also decided to upgrade the standard shift mechanism to short shift. Now what this in effect means is that you've got a shorter throw on the gear lever, so when you actually change gear, it's a lot more direct. Hopefully you can hear that, that's a lot more direct. Now all the mechanism underneath the car has been changed as well. In effect, it means upgrading the, the mechanism that connects the gear lever to the actual gearbox. Now this is called a golden rod so it has what's called a golden rod upgrade that provides that very direct feel in effect removing the bushing that exists within the linkage so that you have a very direct connection to the actual selector shafts within the gearbox do so you have a very direct connection to the selector shafts that actually change the gears in the gearbox now there's two approaches to installing this version of the short shift kit you can install the golden rod which replaces the linkage underneath the car that connects the actual gear lever to, as I said, the selector shafts that actually change the gears in the gearbox. Um, or you can change the actual gear lever, the golden rod connection, the golden rod connecting rod, and you can actually change the actual design of the gear lever as well, and therefore going for a single S design, which is what I ended up going for. So what that, what that actually requires is that you have a complete new gear selector, obviously a new knob, uh, that exists on top of the gear selector 
the new golden rod and obviously all the linkages for the actual short shift kit. The end result is that you get a very direct connection when you're actually changing gear, very mechanical. I mean the 993 is, is the 993 is often referred to as being quite agricultural. I don't think that's very fair. I would say it's very mechanical, it's very direct because you're not you've not got electronic systems in there. It's very mechanical. You're actually moving the selector shafts anyway when you change gear. You're not doing it you're not using a pulley mechanism with cables. This provides a very direct feel to the gear lever change, a very direct gear change, um, which is a lot more preferable in my opinion and in most people's opinion to the standard gear change mechanism. Now this actual system, this short shift kit, I imported from America. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching guys. And if you like what you saw, then please click that like button. And as always, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll receive all future incoming videos. Thank you very much guys, take care and see you in the next video.